Hey guys, Michael here from youtube.com slash the revived one. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my review of Firefox 3.5. Now, this is a, a pretty big improvement because we're going from Firefox 3 to 3.5. Originally, the upgrade pattern was, was the upgrade flowchart, whatever. It's going to go from 3 to 3.1, but they decided to throw in a lot of improvements and they changed it. It was like Firefox 3.1 beta 2, and then it went beta 3 of Firefox 3.5. I believe is how that went down. So there's a lot of cool new features in this build and I'm actually just going to be showing you and, and talking about some of the improvements that are unique to Firefox 3.5. So all that stuff in the past that we've talked about for Firefox 3 and all the stuff you've become accustomed to in Firefox 3 is probably still there and still very usable and, and fun as well. But I'm just going to be walking you through the new features in Firefox 3.5. So the first thing I want to tell you, I can't really show you but I can tell you that there's faster browsing in Firefox 3.5. We'll start off with the TraceMonkey JavaScript engine. This engine is 20 to 40 percent faster, or so Mozilla says, faster than SpiderMonkey, which was the JavaScript engine in Firefox 3. Now, uh, I'm not exactly sure how this how this new engine stacks up to maybe Chrome or Safari's, but I think this is a step in the right direction, and the continued optimization is always appreciated in Firefox, which is my preferred browser. Going on with improvements, there's now CSS improvements, HTML5 support, and also downloadable fonts, which is pretty cool to have. One thing I want to show you is forget this site. So if you had a website that you never wanted anybody to see that you had visited, uh, maybe you're doing something you don't want other people to see, maybe you're you know, buying a gift for somebody on a computer that you all share and you don't want them to see it. So go into your history, go to t whatever, and just pick a website. Usually you would choose one that you didn't want to see, but in this case I'm just going to right click on michaelsherlock.com. If I press on forget about this site, what will happen is it'll be totally sponged and cleared out of the history that Firefox currently has. And then as, if I continue to browse that site, that history will not be stored in the browser and in my memory. So you'll never have to worry about that particular website. And that's actually a really cool thing, like I said, you know, if you're buying a gift for somebody and you're on a shared computer you don't want them to see what you're doing or if you're at work maybe and you don't want your boss to see that you're spending a lot of time on YouTube instead of working you know maybe you want to do that but just something to keep in mind and another thing about that if you go to tools you can start your private browsing and what private browsing is is it's essentially stop stuff from being stored in your history so you already had forget this site but if with private browsing it, it, it keeps new content from being put into your history so instead of blocking maybe uh, a website like maybe you went to Amazon to purchase something for uh, as a gift on a public computer that that person would see you if you start private browsing that information won't be stored in the browser history so you won't necessarily have to block Amazon from your history altogether but you'll just keep it clean so nobody else can see what you were doing and also, right below that, clear recent history. So if you go ahead and click on that, you can clear your history from the last hour, last two hours, last four hours today, or you can clear everything. So let's say you forgot to go to Tools Private Browsing, and for the last you know hour, you've been browsing on Amazon to get your parent or whatever a good gift. Uh, now you can go back, clear that history out, and you never have to worry about it. Another thing I want to talk about is tab tearing. This is something that I really liked and I had to use a plugin for it in the past. And now recently Chrome and I believe Safari support this, but again my preferred browser is Firefox. Again, t what tab tearing is, you can drag tabs to their own window, like this. Just take it, drag it out, and now it's in its own window. Or what you could do is, if you already had it, you could take it, grab it, move it back to a different window. So if you have different windows for, maybe you have your window for, you know, your work, and you have another window for play, and you open up a link uh, from email that's for play, I guess, and it goes into your work window, you can just quickly take it, drag it out, put it into there. Or if you're giving a presentation, or like this, a screencast, and you want to demonstrate something, but you don't want them to necessarily see your 20 tabs that are open because it would just be overwhelming and unnecessary, you can just drag the information out to a new window, and go ahead and go on with it. So tab tearing is something I really like. Uh, now there's another thing, gesture support, which I think is really cool in Firefox 3.5. So with the new MacBook Pros, 
or with MacBook Pros, for instance, on your trackpad, you have multiple gestures. So in, in Safari, what you were able to do was you were able to use three fingers. You were able to use three fingers, and you could go back and forth just by swiping. Now in Firefox, you can do something very similar. So three fingers, back, forward. And we'll go to YouTube as well, just to show you that. Three fingers, back, forward, back, forward. And it's just something that's really easy, and it's just a nice thing to have, because it just, it was something that I had used in Safari when I first got my Mac, and then when I moved over to Firefox, finally installed it after a few days, because, again, Firefox is my preferred browser, I was wondering, you know, what happened? So Firefox 3.5 gives you those gestures back. Now, geolocation is another thing that's included in this, and that's another thing I don't want to show you because my location is not your information. So, using Google's Wi-Fi triangulation and your IP address information, which kind of scares me that you can get a lot of all this information just out of your IP address, so keep that information safe, guys. But using that information, maybe you could type something into Google like post office, and it would pull up the top result as being your local post office instead of just Googling post office. Or things like that, where using your location, they can find results that matter best most to you. And you, you see similar things like in the ads on the side of certain web pages that are, say, like, in your area, you know, here's a pizza place. It's the same concept. Using that information, it's able to find results that are more prevalent to you because it knows where you are. And the last thing I want to mention is video improvements. They've made video much more interactive in terms of how it is presented on the site. It used to be that video was just a part of the site and it was sort of separate from the text and the images you were looking at. But now Firefox 3.5 treats video almost like it's part of the web page. So you could right click and save that video. And this is in all file formats, but for some, you can right click, save the video right to your computer. You, there could be links inside the video where you click it and it links to a different web page or it links and shows you some more information about what you're talking about where there's instant commenting and there's just a lot of cool features but it's kind of hard for me to show you that so thanks to Mozilla here is a demonstration of video improvements one of the features I'm very excited about is support for video you can do the normal things you'd want to do with a video you can play it you can turn up the volume you can turn down the volume you can also right click and save the video to your desktop just like you could save an image one of the nice things about the open video feature is that it can interact with other elements of the web page this is something a plugin can't do so guys i'm michael sherlock from michaelsherlock.com this has just been my overview review whatever you want to call it of mozilla's new firefox 3.5 thanks for watching